Hello and welcome to Budget Model Railways. So we are going to do an update but I thought I'd start with this. Um, a while ago I foolishly sold my old Hornby IVAT uh, Class 2 standard and managed to get this one for £34 including postage and it's much better than my old one. It's actually got crew added and it's a very smooth quiet runner. Um, so there are still a few eBay bargains out there. They are my favourite looking steam loco. I like the almost Germanic look of them. And um, of course, they were very common towards the end of steam, beginning of BR Green, which is my favourite era. And so we'll show you that. And then coming round now is the other little bargain that we've got, uh, which is Doug picked up a couple of javelins, uh, about £35 each. So he's going to use the two coaches and sell the two power cars and the dummies. Um, he likes his modern stuff and that was ridiculously cheap. And so it was a, a good price. And it also shows what we do at Budget Model Railways because you've got a BR Steam Loco running along a brand new Javelin at the same time on the same layout um, because we just like watching trains go around. So that's about, oh, half of our viewers suddenly stop watching. Uh, those of us that know the faith will still be with us. So if we spin round, uh, we've experimented with this. So this is this, um, what's it called? Tule. Tule, which is used in dressmaking. It's a pale blue just to keep the sunlight down a bit and then aid the back seam. And then Doug's added a whole new area here. So we've got some retaining walls to help us now blend in the hill that will go there. And we put a little TMD in, a little stabling point for our diesels. So we've added and cantilevered off some more foam board. Doug 3D printed an inspection pit and we're gonna look at putting those in our range. We had um, a second hand, got this very cheaply a long while ago, a little Backman fueling point. We're gonna find a little shed for it. We've got an inspection ramp to go here. So that'd be a really nice little area, a little stabling point and TMD. That's new. And then obviously Doug's done the hills as well to blend that in. Um, here's going to be a um, uh, signal box to put the point motor in. Uh, signal box had a bit of an accident. <laughs> Some of you will have seen the images on Instagram. So we needed to change the crossover here to a single slip so that we could access all the fiddle roads from both tracks, not just from the first track. The only trouble is the baseboard is built out of half inch solid timber because we build out of whatever we've got. So you'd have seen us using hammers, chisels, uh, electric jigsaws and all this heavy stuff to punch the holes for the point motor. And the, uh, the seismic activity, not surprisingly, broke a few things. Um, but it's all fixed now. Everything runs over that much smoother. Lots of things were struggling with the crossover. And it also means we can access all the roads. So it was worth all the effort. They, that was bought secondhand on eBay, £10 instead of £30 for a new one. So the bargains are continuing a bit. So a few more changes. We've added another high level fiddle yard. And this is for the top loop. So it dawned on us that we could run a little point off there over the back. We have got to get a point mode to put in there because we won't be able to reach it when the back scene's in. Um, just foam board and cardboard, it's all it needs. Um, and that's a little two road, two road fiddle yard for the top layout. Just makes it a little bit more useful. The whole top layout now is becoming a layout in its own right. As you can see, the other big change is an industrial area. Now that looks like that's a lot of progress, but actually that only took me half an hour to do because the buildings were sat in the loft. I bought them secondhand must be four or five years ago. It could even have been when we did the first something show for about two or three pound each from uh, uh, the club shop. So obviously I didn't rush out and spend the 60 odd quid it would take to buy those new. Uh, they were all bought second hand. I've got this which came off an old harbour layout. I actually scratch built that. The railway line can go into it and that's the road access. Um, We've got some fences going on and this was just going to be an industrial area and Doug's very clever. He came up with the idea of running a siding in. So we've actually got a lot of activity now on this little branch line. We've carried on working on the road. So we now have the road going up to the top. Really complicated because of all the various lift off sections. And I've now got to do a road that comes down and into the station area. But the problem with that is trying to get the lift off areas missed off. 
Um, so that's going to be quite interesting. Um, and that's it. So it's quite a lot of progress. I'm off on holiday with my good lady wife uh, tomorrow, hopefully. So not a lot of progress in the next week, although actually I think we're going to release this in a few days time, aren't we? So, but as you can see, quite a lot happening. Oh, I've also started doing a raised area down here, um, which is where a little sort of dockside scene is going to go for the river that's going to go under the viaduct. Um, it's just held in place with tape at the moment while it glues. I haven't got anything running on the top layer. Um, don't know if I can rectify that. Uh, Doug's going to do it for me. It's a bit of a mess up here because we've been working on things. Not sure, I think you've got coupling lock. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. There we go. And then, Doug, if we run this round, you'll see what, what's going to happen around the back of the industrial area, actually, uh, which is quite good fun. So it's going to go over the curved viaduct and the harbour, disappear behind the back scene in a tunnel mouth. You won't actually see it there because there'll be a back scene, but you'll be able to glimpse it running through the factory buildings and just out the back before it disappears. So this is going to be quite an interesting little layout in its own right. It's got a siding into what's going to be a mail order and import export warehouse, two road goods yard with a goods shed and a coal yard and a military um, depot all served from the same direction. So I'll be able to run really nice pickup goods. Um, so there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we know a lot of people are interested in this, judging by the viewing numbers on the last video we did. Um, and it's really beginning to come together. Um, and uh, I won't talk too much. Oh, I do show you this one quickly. So this was a grass bank. Um, Doug realised the curve here was first radius, which the bigger locos don't like. So we've managed to get a second radius in by shortening a bit of the track. But this was too near. So I simply cut it away with a craft knife, slapped on the all-purpose filler um, to make a rock face black wash, dry blush, bit of emulsion paint, and we got a rock face. And now all the locos go around it quite happily. So we did quite a bit of work for, to, to improve the smooth running of the higher speed trains, and it's worked quite well. By comparison to the Juif 26 inch diameter track up there, which a lot of things still don't want to run on, but it's a little branch line, so it doesn't matter. Oh, and I did finish my windmill. <laughs> there we go. So I expect we'll do the usual, do a few minutes of uh, trains running. Uh, thank you as always for watching, commenting and supporting. Get the word out there about these videos. If you enjoy watching them, please spread the word. All the big watched videos are where somebody's promoted it outside of YouTube. So if you do like our videos, please promote them widely. Um, get as many people as possible to see that you can make a really nice fun model railway if you ignore the rivet counters and run BR locos and modern trains and if you lose lots of secondhand stuff and cardboard. Thank you for watching.